Hey everybody, welcome back to the Control Academy. I'm your host, Marshall, and today we're playing Azorius Control in Explorer. Before we get started, if you like the video, remember to hit the thumbs up button, and if you love what we're doing here, creating new control decks every single week, hit that subscribe button and you'll get uh, the opportunity to follow along and be part of this community of control mages as we continue to plot out these new formats and new uh, sets that bring us more and more new tech uh, every single week. Um, so in terms of the deck we're playing this week, um, I will go ahead and say that this deck tech is probably going to be a little bit longer than usual. And so I'll put the timestamps on the screen if you uh, want to go ahead and uh, skip over uh, just to the games, just in full disclosure, because we're talking about a whole new format, not just in terms of what I've played on the stream, uh, but also in terms of just what's been introduced to Arena as a whole. And so Explorer is um, pioneer light, so to speak. And so Wizards uh, of the Coast, the folks who makes the game, um, they have committed, as much as that really means, um, but they have told us at the very least that um, they are like, likely to build toward Pioneer being on Arena. And the idea is that Explorer will have more and more of the Pioneer relevant cards added until it eventually is just Pioneer. Um, and so it's a really great uh, place to be at this point. It's kind of reminiscent of like if you played the Arena beta uh, where like the uh, paper standard environment didn't really perfectly match up to the Arena standard environment. So you had some like little metagamey differences there. Um, but so far, Explorer largely follows uh, the Pioneer metagame uh, pretty well. Um, and that's because they've already through like Jumpstart and some of these um, different anthologies that they released previously put in a lot of the format staples. And so a lot of the best decks and certainly a lot of the control tech cards, uh, you know, conveniently enough, have already been put on Arena. And they've been up there for long enough that uh we can build a lot of the decks we want without too many sacrifices so uh i am going back to my roots blue white control um i am gonna build an esper deck soon because i love esper and we've got now um probably like what like um almost 10 years worth of cards to build <laughs> that out of and so uh that's coming but um, the reason I'm starting with Azorius Control is it's basically a brand new format, um, but the Azorius deck that is already, you know, kind of S tier in Pioneer realistically can be ported over almost one to one uh, to Explorer. The most played card in Azorius Control that d isn't yet on Arena is Supreme Verdict. And so when it comes to Format of Wrath, there's not a lot of them that are better than Supreme Verdict in Pioneer, but there are at least enough that can do a reasonable impersonation. So I'm uh, not too, too worried about that. Um, as for uh, what we're dealing with here, this is very similar um, to what sort of stock um, uh, Azuri's control deck is. Um, we've got uh, Yorian as our uh, partner uh, or companion, whatever you want to call it. Um, because why not? It turns out that 80 hard decks are not nearly as big of a problem uh, as you might think when you can draw a ton of cards. Yorian, uh, being in our companion zone, lets us have just a big flying threat that lets us um, recur some of the uh, permanents that we play. Um, we've got Portable Hole to take care of uh, low-to-the-ground threats. There are a non-trivial number of things uh, from uh, artifact decks and mono red and even like um, the real sort of rule the roost deck right now of Naya Wainota. Um, that portable hole helps us sort of slurp up early. The same thing with Mar uh, March of Otherworldly Light. It's a nice flexible answer that scales throughout the game. Um, and a lot of these sort of early threats can be hit for like between one to three mana pretty easily. Um, so March has been great in standard. It's even better in Explorer. Faithful Absence is uh, a MVP. Um, 
there is probably a reasonable argument for going up to more copies of this, given some of the tweaks to the metagame relative to the Pioneer um, that I put there. But so far, I've been keeping it at two and not been too sad about it. Jawari Disruption is, again, low cost to entry, uh, a sort of two mana force spike. Um, and in uh, a lot of the games that you play in Explorer, that one extra mana uh, can sometimes be uh, pretty non-trivial in terms of um, an opponent's uh, sort of combo deck going off. And so Jawari Disruption ends up being uh, a lot more meaningful in these sort of older formats, um, you know, to a certain point. Omen of the Sea is uh, one of those card draw spells that pretty much only sees play in Yorian decks because it's just okay on its own, but the fact that it sits on the battlefield when you do eventually play Yorian, you can bounce it, uh, or, or blink it, I guess is better to way to say it. Um, you can basically get it uh, to uh, pop off again. Uh, is That's really the benefit here. And um, it does let us churn pretty far through our deck, and since we're playing 80 cards, that's not irrelevant. Dovin's Veto uh, is really important here. This is the sort of uh, role that uh, something like Test of Talents previously would have played in Standard, and there's honestly a good enough uh, justification for Test of Talents in Explorer right now, but Dovin's Veto does a good enough job of being more sort of all-purpose um, that I'm happy to keep it here. Uh, one of the things that especially in Best of One Explorer is absolutely the case right now is that uh, Tybalt's Trickery decks are all over the place because they're relatively low um, low uh, not effort to construct. They don't want to be construed that way. They're, but they, they are pretty straightforward decks to build. They are the kind of things that you can pop in and out of a queue relatively nicely. And if your opponent isn't prepared for it, they, they just lose, right? Um, and so Dovin's Veto um, is one of the better things that we can have that isn't dead against the format writ large, um, but is very difficult for our opponent to interact with um, if they want to try to combo off super early. And so, like I said, especially in Best of One Explorer, the Tybalt Trickery decks, are you can't underestimate them. Um, and so from that perspective, that is probably the biggest immediate difference uh, in this format versus um, the Pioneer format is that Graveyard Hate is really important and defense against Tybalt Trickery is really important. Um, and so that's why that's there. Narset is always just great. Um, this is uh, something that uh, once upon a time probably would have been taken up by Search for Escanta, but Search for Escanta just moves a little bit too slow. Narset um, does double duty against, you know, preventing our opponent from drawing cards, um, but then also getting the sort of uh, uh, dig for a non-creature effect relatively early. Absorb is just a solid counter spell here. You know, it is the sort of cancel that gains us life. Um, there are a lot of things that could fit in this spot, uh, depending on your preferences, but Absorb is very, very good. Um, Depopulate is our four mana Wrath of choice. There's a couple different options here, like obviously Doomscar in standard is fine, but that return requires a turn of setup, which can really set you back in this format. Um, Shatter the Sky is also popular here in that like it only lets your opponent draw a card if they uh, have something that's powerful or greater. I will have to sort of play by ear how much the sort of Streets of Nuka Penna format has uh, influenced um, people's com you know uh, composition of multicolor creatures. Uh, but based on how the format sort of generally looks, um, this is the sort of card that at the four mana wrath spot in blue white seems to give us. Uh, the fewest scenarios where our opponent will draw a card before um, we destroy all creatures. And so this is cl the closest to Wrath of God I think we'll get. But that being said, um, you know, obviously there's already the uh, Mardu Grease Fang that does have some multicolor creatures. And, you know, there's no shortage of them in the format. Um, so I don't think that this is necessarily the be-all, end-all. And I'm still kind of testing it. It's just been... Uh, where I've been happiest so far when it comes to four mana wraths. Uh, we've got two of these. There's a good enough argument for going up on them, but the sort of six wrath package isn't quite as necessary in Explorer as it is standard because like mono white and uh, mono green are not nearly so prevalent in this format. Wandering Emperor is, you know, just every other deck I've played it in, as I've said it before, it makes dudes, it ends the game, it's removal. 
she's good. She's real good, and she's real good here, especially. Uh, Memory Deluge lets us dig real deep, flashes back, everything we want. And again, we're running an 80-card deck, so anything that lets us dig super, super deep is high value. Um, I think that there is an argument for uh, replacing this with uh, Dig Through Time eventually, once that's uh, put into the format. Um, but uh, for now, this is our sort of premier uh, draw spell. And honestly, it's good enough that it could probably stand on its own, even if Dig Through Time was in the format. Um, to big to fairy, um, I'm at three copies here for um, reasons that you know he's legendary, he's five mana, um, and I wanted to make some room for some other uh, top end threats as well. Um, but to fairy hero dominaria has been one of my favorite planeswalkers for a long time because you know he does all things we want to do. He's you know card draw that frees up instant speed resources. He can. Uh, you know, remove things in a very sort of Azorius type way um, that sort of sets their uh, third uh, draw up um, with by bouncing something back. Um, and then his emblem is a win con in and of itself. There were um, back in Dominaria standard, there were definitely decks that literally just had no win cons. They just built up toward getting a Teferi ultimate and just exiling every single thing your opponent has. That isn't strictly what this deck is trying to do, but you certainly can. Um, and so every part of this card is just super legit. We've got Farewell. There's three of these. Artifacts and enchantments are even more prevalent uh, in this format. And so this, as a six-mana Wrath, um, is super, super important. And the Exile All Graveyards clause is really, really important. Um, Mardu Greasefang, especially in Best of One, is really hard to sort of pre-sideboard against. So it's a favored uh, choice because it was already, you know, basically S-tier and Pioneer. And then in Explorer Best of One, you know, you've you've really got to... Uh, have an answer for the graveyard and so six mana is probably too slow uh, for that to be relevant but hopefully we can sort of get there uh, with all the other things in the deck um, but this sort of combination of wrath effects is really important shark typhoon is our sort of workhorse uh, card draw with its cycling effect um, i think that the time number of times that you will ever cast it as an enchantment are very very few and far between um but when we cycle uh shark typhoon uh we not only draw a card but we make you know a big flying shark and so um this has become a staple for everything back to modern control and so there's no reason that it shouldn't be a staple here it's strong the flying sharks are both you know visually terrifying and also become a bit of a problem <laughs> for our opponents and then last but not least hullbreaker horror is here because we have a lot of things that can trigger it uh it's really big and powerful and it's an uncounterable answer this could easily be a fourth teferi hero of dominaria but i wanted to diversify it a little bit just to make sure that we have um, other answers um, for the mana base we get to dig back a lot further so we get to go back to castle ardenvale which is make us some little dudes that can help us close out the game block creatures etc etc um, we've already got the utility lands from standard covered we go back to castle vantress which is a scry um, very very useful <laughs> in these types of decks we got creature lands and hall of the storm giants these all should look familiar and then going back to explorer now we get uh, the shock lands and the buddy lands uh, or check lands, depending on what you want to call them um, back in the format. So we get access to some really great mana. So instead of having to um, rely uh, exclusively on the pathways and whatnot, um, which we still do have in this deck because it's an 80 card deck, uh, we can make use of some really uh, good mana. Uh, and then we also have an uh, irrigated farmland. Um, it's a cycling ETB tap land. Um, and importantly, it has Plains Island land types on it. Um, so it helps us uh, get the uh, glacial fortresses and untapped. Um, but again, more duels, um, more things that let us uh, you know, use our mana base uh, uh, conveniently. And we've got two Field of Ruins here uh, because opposing creature lands are a thing and we have enough room that we can do this. And it's no problem. Um, when we look at the metagame at large, uh, Naya Wynota is probably the sort of like double S tier deck to beat. Um, it comes over basically unchanged from Pioneer and it was already sort of top in Pioneer. It's also really good in best of one. So that's our sort of boogeyman there. Um, Mono Red is pretty good already. It doesn't lose a lot in the transition from Pioneer to Explorer. Um, other control decks like 
the same reason I'm playing this one as my four sort of first video on Explorer are uh, really great too. Um, and then I already mentioned Mardu Greasefang. Um, and those are all the, like the pioneer decks that come over really easily. Um, Tybalt's Trickery, again, it is a known quantity. It's good in Pioneer, and in here people are jamming it um, in this sort of like early Explorer format, especially in Best of One, because it's just quick games. It's really powerful, and if your opponent doesn't have an answer, you just win, right? Um, and so we've got to be uh, aware <laughs> of all of those things uh, going into it. Um, I think that um, one of the sort of biggest changes that this deck will ultimately need um, for Best of One is that we will want um, some amount of graveyard hate main deck. And in terms of options that we can have for uh, main deck graveyard hate, um, I think throwing in some number of soul guy lanterns will ultimately be the right call. Um, in this case, I I went back and forth on enough on what uh, to choose for that that I. Ended up just saying, okay, let's leave the deck stock until I have more information because it's entirely possible that the Grease Fang decks uh, will get pushed down to sort of naturally uh, by the format. Um, and so if they continue to be a problem, expect my next revision of this deck to have some number of Soul Guide Lantern main deck. Um, running Rest in Peace main deck is eh, not really amazing just because... Um, it's just so dead in so many matchups. Um, but at least Soul Guide Lantern, worst case scenario is it draws a card. And so... It's a little bit easier to stomach, um, but it's not here now um, because the format is so young. I still want to sort of, sort of see what this deck does as as built. Um, but anyway, um, I would really appreciate it uh, since this is my first video on Explorer. Almost every other video I've put up on the channel has been in standard um, or the few uh, very uh, underwhelming uh, forays into alchemy. Um, and so, if you like. Explorer content and you want to see more of it when you you know think that this experiment of me putting up Explorer content uh, on the channel uh, was a success please let me know in the comments um, share it with uh, friends and whatnot um, I want to make sure I'm um, not shouting into the void by going off of standard and so um, that's why I am uh, making sure that I pick a great deck to start with to show this off with and I would love to be able to brew in this format um, but uh, I want to make sure that you guys are actually enjoying it so leave a comment um, and hey uh, if you're new here uh, like the video subscribe to the channel um, and Hopefully, uh, I'll be putting up a lot more Explorer content in the near future, um, but at the very least, you can expect uh, new standard control decks as well every single week, um, and I try to get a little uh, uh, creative with them uh, as we move forward, um, and so anyway, that's my whole spiel. Uh, I've talked a lot about this very big deck and the format writ large, and it's time for us to get some games in to sort of put it in action, and so without further ado, I'll see you there. All right, we're up against Haggarducer. Good luck, Haggarducer. We're on the draw, because of course we are. And if I've had better hands, I've also had worse hands. Um, the Wandering Emperor, the Wandering Emperor is legit. Omen of the Sea could help fix us a little bit. Our lands aren't bad. Um, I'm gonna give it a go. But we need to draw a little bit more action. I assume our opponent is playing blue. <laughs> well, maybe it's Seamer, but so far this is pointing toward Naya Wainota, which is a lot of what I've played against recently. <laughs> um, oh, okay, Jund. It's the Jun Sacrifice deck, perhaps? Um, yeah, we'll see. It's been an interesting format, especially since the format just reset, so... Um, uh, yeah, not having that. There's our Tibble's Trickery deck. Jun Tibble's Trickery, alright. Yeah. See, they either have it or they don't. And so, in our case, we had it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, next up is Drone Double O, or Drone Zero Zero. Good luck, Drone. On the play, 
love to see it. We got removal, we got wrath, we got card draw, we got Teferi. Um, mana's meh, but I'll keep it. I hate this board because like the perspective always just like makes me feel a little nauseous if I'm being honest. My opponent said hello, so I gave him a little wave. Speak of the heavens. Um, all right, are we? Are we playing against some variation of soul sisters? I don't actually remember what this goes with. This appears to be something soul sistery. Um, I think here, so I can still I can march the voice of the blessed next turn. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just take the damage, let them pump up the voice, and uh, play Omen and see this turn. Um, like, there's a chance that this spirals, but I need to keep my hand growing. Portable hole is also an acceptable answer for that. Um, I do want one more land, so I'll go ahead and just leave these the way they are, draw a card, and then I'll get the portable hole at my next turn. And so I'll play this, and then I'll portable hole, slurp up the voice. And everybody's happy. And push comes to shove, I can march something. Righteous Valkyrie is a thing. And I don't need to march it just yet. And my turn. Main reason I'm not marching is I just don't want to exile something from my hand if I don't have to. Um, we're doing all right. One more land lets us get to to ferry, and so there are two kind of interesting options here. Um, I could just pass and leave up removal and absorb, which is probably the best call. Or I could buy Yorian and you know push comes to shove. I can march by exiling from my hand. I don't really want to give up anything from my hand yet, at least not enough to buy Yorian at this stage, so I'm going to just pass, counter anything too scary that they cast, but yeah, if they're just going to attack for three, then it's not the end of the world. I'll take the damage. I'll probably march the Valkyrie either way. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to counter this one. Yep, and then I can still march the other one at some point. But So the reason I did that is that I only get the chance to interact with that on the stack once, but this is going to sit here to be messed with um, for a while. So um, I'll go ahead and Teferi. Draw a card. Right on, we need to move quickly. And just untap two beaches. The Righteous Valkyrie. Um, like, this is annoying. Um, they'll go up to 25, 20. Oh, no, hold on. They're going to get. All right, so they're going to get the plus two, plus two, which is going to hurt. But it's not going to be the end of the world, so I don't. I think I want to wait and cast farewell. And so, 11. Oh, 11 hurts. The alternative is I can march the speaker and just take 6. That's probably the right call, just to sort of minimize things. Losing to Fairy is also not great. But I need to be able to wrath. Yeah, losing to, like losing to fairy is uh, annoying. Um, all right, I'm gonna since they're only attacking me with one, I'm just going to take the damage and wrath. Losing to fairy is really frustrating, but that's fine. Resolve, resolve. They've got so much life. On the plus side, we've gone through quite a lot of uh, Valkyries, so here I'll play this on blue, and then fare thee well. 
Um, so I'm going to exile our artifacts because exile the portable hole will happen first and then I'll get the voice underneath it so that there's no chance of them getting it back. Salt so creatures and then graveyards. I don't think that matters. Um, so just in the off chance that I end up caring about it, I'm just gonna leave the graveyards intact and just nuke the creatures. So we're not out of the woods, but <laughs> they're at 60 life. This is gonna be a long one, folks. Inspiring Overseer. Spell field gain life, draw a card. Well, that's that's a pretty good addition to that deck, honestly. Um and I like where we're at. Uh I mean as much as I can. How do I not have a planes yet? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, so we have seven uh, six mana, so I can make a big fat shark, and that'll be a good way to block their creature. So let's go ahead and cycle. Um, three, four. Okay. No. Oh, okay. That's fine. I mean, I would have rather had the four four, but of all possible outcomes, that wasn't awful. Um, I could buy and cast Yorian. Leave up removal and memory deluge. I could memory deluge by Yorian. I'm not getting a ton of value out of Yorian, but maybe that's the right answer. Like, how much removal could they possibly have, right? Yeah, to heck with it. We're going to at least get like, one card drawn off of uh, Omen of the Sea. So our bare minimum is that we're hopefully setting ourselves up for some good stuff. I will happily take another farewell, and this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a grindy game. So I actually need this Hall of the Storm Giants. So yeah, I'll just keep both of those in on top. Draw one. Johnny, Strength of the Pride. Okay, well that was a thing. <laughs> All right, all the storm giants. Um, eventually, I'll probably march this, but uh, we're actually getting reasonably low on life, so I do need to think about that. Two attackers. I'm going to memory to lose just to see if there's a better option. Okay, yeah, no, that's actually a. Th three drops, so I can't portable hole that. But I... Odawara... And I will take the portable hole. Um, then I'll just march this. I need to keep my life total high, and the portable hole will help stave off some of their worst threats. We've got a Wrath in the worst case scenario. had worse draws. Actually still don't have a planes, which is kind of crazy. Um, Alright, and then I think I just pass. I've got a lot of ways to interact with things. Collected Company. They've got plenty of mana, um, so countering it with Jewelry Disruption ain't going to do anything. I've got 10 could try to find an absorb, which is there's still a few of them. Dovin's veto, I think. This is probably the right call. There's a Dovin's veto, so that's one of the options. And then I'll take a Shark Typhoon for the other. And Dovin's veto. There we go. Got there. <laughs> Good game. All right, next up is the Spork. Good luck, Spork. All right, we're on the play. Uh, we got plenty of interaction. We got a threat. 
I mean, it's fine. Um, let's give it a go. Okay. I am getting, um... That's probably the wrong card play. I'm getting, um... Winota vibes here. I guess I don't know if that I would have played land any differently, but... Alright. Leave it up. Unfortunately, Dovin's Veto does not solve a Winota, which is... I, I guess haven't yet seen the other two colors of mana, but that's what this is screaming to me, is that they've just... I mean, maybe it's mono green. Who knows? Alright, well, if they're not gonna force my hand, then I guess I'll draw some cards. Uh, Jawari Disruption is fine. I don't really want a second order Wara right now. Let's... I'm gonna get rid of the Jawari. Like, they've got a lot of mana, and I think I need just better action than what I've got. And none of that <laughs> meets that description. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a problem. So, I think the only reason to play the Hollowed Fountain over the island here is the like narrow case where next turn I've got a Castle Arden Veil, but then like I don't desperately need to play that next turn anyway. So play this, um, and I'll play into either Odawara or um, Shark Typhoon, probably Shark Typhoon, to try to snag something. Okay, they're only attacking with that. I'll uh, just take the four for now. Doesn't feel great, but. Car and the Great Creator can go away. <laughs> Don't know why they're playing it, but I do not want to find out. <laughs> My turn. Alright. Deserted Beach. The more uh, land I can get out, the more... Um, the bigger of a... Uh, Shark Typhoon I can play. Buying Yorian doesn't really do anything for me right now, so I'm going to hold off. Uh, do I want to Odawara here? Let's do that. They'll be able to play it again, but at least this sets their tempo back. I'm not going to be able to counter anything anyway, and a 3-3 three, three, uh, shark isn't actually going to accomplish a whole lot right now. Nissa, who shakes the world. Yep, I forgot all about that card. <laughs> Well, play this on white. Fateful absence. This. I must seek comfort in my land. Then I'm gonna buy Yorian. So I don't think I want to run out Shark Typhoon there, but being able to play Yorian next turn might actually end up being pretty decent value. Oh, we woo. I am Kaz. I will rid you of your corruption. Oh, treasure vault. Of all the things I could have gotten, that's not the scariest. <laughs> Alright, absorb feels pretty good there. Let's so it gets us to seven mana. Let's pay two life. 
Um, so let me leave up only two. Um, I'm going to pass so that I can leave up Absorb and Shark Typhoon. What do you got? Gonna try to Mycosynth blast me? That's not in Pioneer, is it? God Pharaoh's statue. <laughs> yep, don't particularly like the looks of that. Yeah, you can have your troll. I did not expect to see Karn the Great Creator in a green aggro deck. I will give them that. <laughs> Follow Haven. Uh, sure. Alright, make a gigantic shark. I think I can move five. Okay. Narset is decent. Um, let's see how to proceed here. Five and one. So I think here I play out Narset. Get another shark typhoon seems good and then here so this Karn doesn't really accomplish a whole lot um, the way it currently is so I don't feel like I'm in, under immediate pressure to kill it they're gonna just block with a gilded goose anyway so I'll sit with it back on defense and then just prepare to hopefully counter a god pharaoh's uh, statue the second absorb is pretty good game. Okay. We've got plenty of mana. What do you want to do with it, opponent? Storm the Festival. Yeah, I don't particularly want you to do that. All right. That was enough for our opponent. Good game. All right. Next up is Collage. Good luck, Collage. Seeing their Xander Avatar is giving me a little bit of PTSD because the only other person I've seen play a Xander Avatar Soren into a turn three Xander on me and I'm I'm like still twitching from it, but this hand's fine. We've got counter magic, we've got card draw, we've got Narset, and we've got removal. Um, our mana is perfectly fine, uh, and we're on the play, so no complaints about this hand. Go ahead and play a Hollow Fountain tapped. Save ourselves some life. If our opponent is... Oh, okay. Mardu. Or Mardu. Sorry. White mana. <laughs> I meant to say white. Um, so we're already off to at least a decent start in that regard. Um, I'll go ahead and play Castle Ardenvale. Um, just for giggles and pass a turn. I'll Jawari Disruption. Almost anything. Um, cast out. Alright. Not sure where our opponent's playing, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. We've got a couple things we can do if we need to. Ooh. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, opponent's on blue white. So let's see uh what they're up to. Their sleeves and avatar don't scream blue-white, but clearly it's where they're at. Um, so we've got 
four to five lands in hand already. I think we need more action, so I'll keep the absorb, but I'll put the deserted beach on bottom. Yep, and looks good. Um, I'll go ahead and play island, and then pass. Um, we're in no hurry, especially if our opponent is playing another control deck. We don't want to rush things. There's no real benefit to doing so. But now we can leave up counter magic of multiple flavors. We got removal. Feeling pretty good. And we've got enough land where we'll get to the Narset. Just gotta be patient. The real question is do I want to cycle this irrigated farmland? And I think the answer is probably yes. There is a world. <laughs> got another farm line anyway. There's a world where if we fall too far behind on land, um, our opponent can punish us for it. But in these control mirrors, we just want to make sure that we have the better average card quality. Um, and so taking that advantage is fine. But here, since we don't have a clear use on four, I'm going to go ahead and play that tapped. Pass the turn. Part of what's also made evaluating my opponents a little harder like literally today is that the format <laughs> changed over or the season changed over rather and so i've gone back to silver because i spent a little bit too much time brewing <laughs> last month and not enough time uh spiking my way up the ladder and so going back to silver has uh meant that i'm playing up against all sorts of fun stuff plenty of meta stuff because like um you know, I think a lot of people are excited about Explorer, but like, there's been some stuff that I'm just like, didn't expect to see that. <laughs> Not at all. Cool, but looks like our opponent's probably just on the 60 card version of our deck, which is fine, but means we've got some work to do. Um, it also means that whoever taps out first is probably going to lose. <laughs> Uh, but at this point, we've got enough counter magic that I'm not too worried. I just wish we had something like Memory Deluge um, or even like Wandering Emperor that we could just, you know, peg at the end of their turn to try to get things moving. Opponent's drawn a good number of cards with these cast outs. Otawara. I really like that land. Okay. And just untap. All the storm giants is solid. And pass. This is the least thrilling part, probably from a visual perspective, um, of control mirrors, um, especially since we're both. I assume playing pretty grindy stuff, um, but they have gone a bit of a different way with their options here. I'm almost wondering, um, wait, are they just playing Shark Typhoon? Um, yeah, I'll counter that. They could have just been making sharks this entire time and instead they <laughs> tried to build up to that. Uh, I mean, I can't punish them super hard, but like, yeah, that's that was bold. Um, I'll pay two life for this. I don't think I necessarily need to, but I'll take this opportunity to play an R set, leave up mana. Um, I don't feel super bad for our opponent. Um, they tapped out first, and they got greedy as all heck. Like. There are maybe some scenarios where playing out the six mana enchantment like makes some amount of sense um, if you've got a ton of mana and like you can back it up with counter magic, but they just went shields down for functionally no reason. Um, and then here, the question is, do I want to counter this because they're gonna go after my Narset? And I think. I think I want to keep my NR set at least one more turn, so I'm going to go ahead and try to counter it. Okay. 
Read the card, please. You get your life, but read the card. <laughs> okay. I, I shouldn't be saying this. Our opponent's probably new to the format. Like, you know. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be mean, but like those were two pretty significant misplays. And I suppose from the perspective of Control Academy, like obviously that that was just they didn't read Dovin's Veto. Like they can cast as many counter spells as they want. So Arena wasn't misleading them. They just couldn't actually counter it. Um, but in the, even in that case, like the, there are a couple of mistakes they made. Is that Shark Typhoon? The benefit of the cycling version is it can't really be countered like it, by most of the counter spells in the format, um, and it makes a threat immediately. And so it's not recurring. But like the, I said in the beginning, though, the person who taps out first in this matchup, this sort of mirror match, is the one who loses. So you've got to just sort of play the gunslinger game. Um, and so they they apparently had been sitting on a good threat this entire time. Or maybe, I guess I don't know how long they had it, but like trying to go up to six and then not even, like if they had even had like seven mana and they'd have the ability to like, you know, or so eight mana or something like that to be able to, you know, get a value off it from like sensor or something like that. That's one thing, but with um, Shark Tafoon typing out for six, that is, that was mistake one. And then them actually trying to cast out um, main phase, like the one of the big benefits, the reason why you play cast out over any of the sort of cheaper um, sort of O-ring effects is it has flash. And so um, I guess they could, they were trying to make sure that they uh, gave me as few activations of Narset as possible. But even if they want to do that, they should have done it in my upkeep. Um, so that way I'm spending the man on my turn. Because basically it, they, they scooped it up um, but they would have at least forced me to spend my counter magic during my turn, which limits the amount that I could do. And so, you know, I would have been able to play a Teferi and, you know, do, uh, leave up, uh, absorb, uh, in this turn. But if they had done it the other way around, they could have still prevented me from getting a, a activation off Narset, but forced me to spend my resource in my turn. So anyway, that's my explanation for what our opponent could have done better and I think it's just a, an experience issue there. Again, we are in silver. I don't know if our opponent's new, um, but that's that's what I would do differently for my opponent. All right. Up next is Yinshi. Good luck, Yinshi. All right, we're on the draw, which is acceptable, I suppose, especially considering we are loaded on removal and counter magic. We've got a Narset. I like this hand about as much as I can, so I'm going to keep it. Ooh, okay. This is the Grease Fang deck, so this is where uh, I wish I had main deck Graveyard Hate. Um, cause that's really what's going to sort of put us to the test. Um, yeah. Like, we're, we've got a lot of good stuff going on here. Um, but if they mill a Parhelion, our life is going to be difficult. <laughs> Turn your creature with mana value three or less from your graveyard. The battlefield gains. If, okay. Yep. And then. Grease Fang is what they get. In theory, well, they don't have a good target for it yet, but um, yeah. Getting a free Parkillion 2 is scary. <laughs> I, mean, I guess this doesn't come out till 5 mana, but they've almost certainly got more copies of it in there <laughs> somewhere. Um, okay. I do want to play this, or even the, there's an Esper version of Mardi Grease, well, Esper Grease Fang. Um, that is a much more control, control. It's a control deck with a combo finish, so I probably will try that somewhere in the near future. Well, there, there it is. Um, but I wasn't quite prepared for it to play it today. Um, plus, obviously, I got to start with Azorius Control. So I mean, our opponent has assembled things that they need, so I've got to be ready to answer this. Um, don't have anything I really want to activate there. Play a deserted beach. 
um, and then leave up a bunch of interaction. Hope it's good enough. I mean, even if we had the Soul Guide Lanterns that I had talked about in the deck tech, we can't guarantee we'd have them in the timely fashion, but, you know, it would be really nice. <laughs> Alright, so they're playing They Can't Stay Away From Hand, which is fine. So here, I want to make sure I'm doing this the best way possible. So Parhelion 2, when it attacks, it creates two angel creature tokens. Ba -ba. Um, Grease Fang uh, gives you something in combat. So the question here is, do I want to counter the Can't Stay Away, or do I want to answer the cards? And so this cares about combat, so I'm going to let this resolve. And then I'm going to exile it. So it's x equals 3. Then I need to exile one card from my hand. And so I'm going to exile the Fateful Absence. The upside of doing it this way, even though it's not really good card advantage, is that I prevent them from having that trigger. Um, but then I also, like, the it goes to um, exile and not the yard. So, um, pitch that. Um, so it means that they can't just untap and try to do it immediately. Croxa, sorry about that, everybody. Croxa is going to prove to be a challenge, too, but... So this Odawara isn't awful. Um, so yeah, we're still not out of the woods. Because they still have a Parhelion 2 in their graveyard. Um, but we've at least dodged the first Grease Fang. Gonna escape a crux, aren't they? Resolve. Okay, so here I've got all right. I'm going to go ahead just bounce this and then discard it's one of these two um, I think I've got to get rid of Narset the Wandering Emperor lets us leave up counter magic better, and while Narset will help us dig for a Wrath, like, oh, jeez, um, missing land drops isn't great either. Um, this gives us sort of the most options. They're going to make us discard um, with Kroxa again anyway, but um, at least we've got things with Flashback <laughs> to help us get there. So, resolve. Discard. Play sack. And there. They could bring back Kruxa right now, but. Um, they'd have to exile some good stuff from the graveyard, so we've at least slowed things. Like, you can't stay away. I can't stay away. Can grab Crux up and then they have to discard it again. Or they have to sacrifice it and then it gets exiled, so I don't see them doing that. Um, I'm going to drop the Emperor here. Start getting things going anyway. Farewell is good in the event that we can finally uh, get more mana, <laughs> which is 
Not right now. Does your opponent actually have a removal spell? Part of that card is pretty bizarre. Oh no! No! Connect back to the server! Ah! Okay, so what happened? They lightning axed. Okay, they lightning axed the samurai. So, alright, so that happened. Oh, it's been so long since I've <laughs> had that happen. I, uh,. I forgot of the sort of panic as you try to move forward, but now I'm out of timeouts. Ugh. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, well. Yeah, this Grease Fang deck is pretty good. And best of one, it's... Like, I'm almost wondering if I need to play some number of Ashiok. Uh, like the War of the Spark Ashiok in the main board. Um, just to have some action. Um... I mean, all of this graveyard hate, like, needs to be sort of, like, incidental. Like, there's the one charm that um, just has a graveyard hate mode on it. And, like, that is... This is a perfect example of, like, why that charm is going to be great. Um, but, like, there's not an amazing one of those in blue-white. Um, even in blue-white-black. So... In theory, if we weren't so short on mana, this farewell would be really, really solid. But um, as it stands, we're just kind of stuck on the back foot. I wonder if our opponent ended up disconnecting too. I see them looking at stuff now, but there was a little while there where it wasn't. And so, either way, uh, it seems rough for you. Hey, it's a land! So... There's that. Our opponent is... They've, I mean, they've got enough where they can um, Croxa, but I suspect they're um, dragging their feet on it because of... Um, Let your blade do the talking. Because they don't want to exile, can't stay away. This card's art is so, so weird. <laughs> so very, very weird. Blood Tithe Harvester... It's a thing. Like, if we can top deck a land, I feel pretty good about where we're at. Alright, my turn. That's a land. So, let's go ahead and... Go ahead and plus on the samurai. See if we can get some damage in. We're gonna lose our memory deluges, and that sucks. But um, I suspect that the tempo swing will be worth it. Yep, seems good. And then goodbye, artifacts, creatures, graveyards, like that. Now we're not in an amazing spot. <laughs> Grease Fang doesn't do a whole lot if uh, you don't have dudes, though, so. Um, I think I want to be able to cycle that, so. Um, and here, create a samurai. Like, I've said it before, I'll say it again, we're not out of the woods, but. Um, yeah, Grease Fang. Does not do a whole lot on its own. Alright. So far, so good. Alright, well, there's the Parhelion. Um, so now I need to try and do something. Uh, 
I mean, that's technically something. Alright. So I think uh, it only has one loyalty right now. So it's gonna make two angels. Yikes! All right, so I got a um, shark typhoon, and I think so. We'll see how they attack. It looks like they're just attacking me. Oh, okay. Sending one toward the Wanderer. Um, just gonna Shark Typhoon and there. We go. Um, X is going to be equal to one. On the off chance that draws, I don't know what we draw that for one mana, but I'm literally just blocking here and drawing a card. So, in this case, so saving the Wandering Emperor doesn't really do a ton, but preventing some of this damage is not super useful, so I'm going to go save the Wandering Emperor just in the off chance that it's relevant. Samurai. I have got new moves to teach you. Want to draw a card. That will be good if we can keep from dying, which seems difficult. Yeah, I needed this to be a four mana wrath. Um, if it had been depopulate, it would have been a different story, but. I think the way that this is playing out is not going to be in our favor. Yeah, because we don't have the flyers here. Um, the one out is if they try to cast something, we can absorb it and live a turn, potentially. And eh, not really, because they're almost certainly going to attack with Blood Tithe Harvester. Um... Give it a shot. Yeah, there we go. All they needed to do was attack with everything. If they had a march, could have survived, but... Oh well, GG. Alright, and welcome back for the wrap-up. So... What did we learn this week about Azorius Control and Explorer? Uh, first off, it's so much fun. It's really great being able to play with some of these cards I haven't been able to uh, play with for a little while. Um, it's, uh, you know, the Yorian decks uh, bring back some serious nostalgia from uh, the standards of not so long ago. Um, but that being said, uh, there, there were some uh, worthwhile learnings here in terms of both what works and what doesn't. Um, so we played, uh, you know, a bunch of games um, against the uh, Tybalt's Trickery decks. Unsurprisingly, if you had the Dovin's Veto and they went to Tybalt's Trickery, you win. If, if you didn't, you lose. And so the one time uh, it, we faced it, we happened to have it. So that was a nice, like, I don't know, probably like minute and a half game. Um, going up against the Control Mirror, I, like, I think that... Uh, the control decks are mature enough in this format that it is really skill testing, and for better or for worse, um, you know, the mirror that we played against, our opponent made some mistakes, and so um, realistically, that's uh, the edge there. Um, and then I, uh, I am going to leave in a uh, relatively sort of grindy game against the uh, Grease Fang deck um, that I think exemplifies why this deck is much better in best of three um and potentially 
Uh, if you're not going to play it in best of three, it needs some sort of main deck graveyard hate. And so Soul Guide Lantern is what I'm eyeballing, but the problem with Soul Guide Lantern is that it's one off and, you know, it's uh, if you just don't have it when you need it, then you're kind of out of luck. Um, the obvious, like, perfect choice that you can play in best of three a lot more com- comfortably is Rest in Peace. And so Rest in Peace is really where you want to be, uh, but in best of one, you know, the decks that it uh, doesn't do anything against are just going to be like, yeah, who cares, right? Um, and so until we have better graveyard hit options, that is going to be sort of our biggest natural predator. The Naya uh, y Noted decks are terrifying, but if you have the removal um, and you sort of play uh, very carefully about it, um, you can get through it. Um, the mono red, the mono green, the different aggro decks, this deck is totally fine uh, with those. Um, and so really, um, you know, may, like I haven't really played a ton of the Jund Sacrifice deck that is out there. There's a Jund and a, a, um, as a Jund version, and there's a Rakdos version that um, I need a little bit more data on to say conclusively. But realistically, in best of one, the Grease Fang deck is rough. But in best of three, it gets a lot easier. You bring in more... Um, answers, you know, on the stack, you can bring in rest in peace. Um, you know, you've got some options that are, uh, pretty solid, uh, for getting around that deck. And so, uh, that's really, um, where the biggest challenge lies, uh, for this deck. So, um, otherwise, like I'm pretty happy with the com- the choices I made. Depopulate worked really great. Um, I don't think I ever really regretted it as the four mana choice here again i think shattered of sky is another perfectly legitimate option um you know if you want to go to doom scar like it's going to clog up your early turns but um it's maybe the best option especially if croxa ends up being super super uh popular um but depopulate which is a new streets of, a streets of new capenna card it is a brand new card um I, i'm pretty happy there but anyway, um, so there are a couple questions. Is one, did you like this foray into Explorer, and do you want more? Um, and two, um, do you want me to keep doing Explorer in best of one, like I've been doing with Standard, um, or does it make more sense to switch over to best of three? And so I think um, a lot of these sort of eternal formats lend themselves better to best of three because sideboards become more meaningful. Um, and we might run into fewer of these sort of like hyper one-sided matchups, uh, but I want your feedback. So let me know in the comments, uh, especially, you know, if you're one of the folks that's, uh, been with the channel, uh, for a while now, just let me know. Um, I like best of three enough that I'm happy to make my Explorer content best of three, keep standard best of one. Um, we can stick with best of one and sort of, you know, figure out how to tune that, uh, format a little bit better if that's the call. Um, but I just want to know what, uh, you all want. And that's really the most important thing. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you like the idea of getting a new control deck in your, uh, YouTube subscribers bin every week, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because this will certainly not be the last control deck, um, that I put together in, uh, any of the formats that I play. But anyway, that's enough, uh, from me. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless. Uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't want to be one of the...